Timers are internal instructions among many other instructions within the RS Logics 5000 library. So anytime you come across a requirement similar to this, when a start button is pressed, the motor will run for 20 minutes and then shut off. As you can see in this requirement, there is a timer value which is in minutes. So anytime you come across a similar requirement that deals with uh, minutes, seconds, hours, days, any timer value, it means we need to grab one of these internal blocks which are timers, configure them to use them and we're good to go. So what are timers? Timers are internal programming instructions. They use memory for their functioning. In other words, in order for us to be able to integrate the timer into our program, we need to allocate the sufficient amount of memory for that timer to function properly. And this is done by creating tags with the proper data type for this timer. I'm going to run, an, after we go through this introduction, I'm going to run an example that shows the creation of this tag and how we can actually integrate timer into our program. How does timers work? Once the timer is activated in a program, the timer will start timing to get a specific configured value. What are the elements or the parameters of a timer? We have two double integers, which are the preset value and the accumulator value. And we have three Boolean parameters, which are the enable bit, timer timing bit, and the done bit. And having good understanding of all of these parameters will enable us to successfully integrate a timer into our solution. So the first block or the first parameter is the preset one. The preset, is, it does not involve any analysis. If you want the timer to run for one second, for example, as the base unit in Alibrad is a millisecond, it means the preset value has to be 1,000, 1,000 millisecond. If you want the timer to run for 10 seconds, that's 10,000. Okay. The accumulator is another double integer, which tells us for how long a timer has been active. So if the preset value is 10,000 millisecond, once the timer is activated, the accumulator will tell us if for how long it has been active, for one second, two seconds, three, or any number between zero and 10 seconds. The remaining three Boolean parameters are enable bit, timer timing, and done bit. And please focus understanding these uh, in a good way. It's going to enable us to integrate them uh, and into our solution. So how does the enable bit work? The enable bit indicates if the timer on instruction is enabled. In other words, the wrong in condition that controls or triggers the timer is going to specify the state of the enable bit. If the wrong end condition is true, the enable bit is true. If the wrong end condition is false, the enable bit is false. The second boolean is timer timing. This one indicates that a timing operation is in process. In other words, if the timer is active and the accumulator is still less than the preset value, it means the timer timing would be on. The last boolean is the done bit. And this is our flag that indicates to us that the accumulator actually hit or uh, reached the preset value. That's when the done bit is set. So these are the three Boolean parameters that we need to understand to integrate them. In this table, we have all the parameters of any timer. In Allen Bradley, there are uh, three different types of timers. However, they all consist of the same parameters. And right now, choosing the proper uh, requirement for the problem would enable us to choose which timer to go with. So what are the different timers in Allen Bradley? TON, TOF, and RTO. Understanding the requirement that you come across will enable you to choose the proper one, a proper timer in your solution. So if you want a timer to start timing once it's energized, once the timer is energized, you need to use a timer on delay, TON. In some applications, you might be interested to start timing after the timer is disabled. That's when you use timer off delay, TOF. If you want a timer to act in a retentive way, if it means if you want to, if you are interested to time the accumulation of operating time for a device, then an RTO is what you need. For all of these timers, a, a very important concept that you are going to notice in building your solutions is the reusability of these timers. In other words, if you want to reuse a timer in your program, you have to figure out a way that to reset this timer. And one way to reset these timers is using the reset instruction. Now, two main factors that we need to remember to be able to create a timer, to use it. The tag must be created for each timer that's going to be used in a program. Example, you can give it any name that you want. The most important thing, the data type has to be timer. The second fact in Allen Bradley is, we mentioned this, is the base unit is a millisecond. So if you want the timer to run for one second, the preset value has to be set to 1,000. That's one second into 1,000 millisecond. And for if you have three minutes, please do not say 3,000. The preset value will be 
I'll give you two seconds to think about this. Hopefully you got the, this one right. It's 180,000 millisecond. So these are the, the main introduction or the basic introduction for uh, different types of timers and the uh, timer uh, parameters. Right now we're going to start with the first one which is timer on delay. And for this I'm going to rely on the software to show you how to create a tag for the timer, how to insert it into our program, and how does the different parameters enable bit, timer timing, dumb bit, behave in a solution. So let's see how this one works.